chilly evening in early autumn during a neighborhood gathering. Our friends had come over for a casual get. Together, an evening filled with laughter, good food, and glasses of wine. It was meant to be a night of relaxation, a break from the stresses of our daily lives. As I mingled with our neighbors in the cozy living room, I felt a sense of contentment, the kind of happiness that comes from knowing you have a loving family and a supportive community. The room buzzed with conversations and the clinking of glasses, and the atmosphere was warm and inviting. But as the night wore on, I noticed that the tone of the conversations around me had shifted. Whispers and sidelong glances were exchanged among the guests, and an unsettling tension began to permeate the air. It was as if an invisible storm had swept through, leaving an atmosphere far chillier than the autumn evening outside. I was standing by the refreshment table, pouring a glass of wine when my friend Maggie approached me. Her normally bright eyes were heavy with concern, and her voice was barely audible over the ambient chatter. Sarah, she said, leaning in closer, as if to shield her words from prying ears. I've heard something you need to know. Intrigued and worried by the urgency in Maggie's voice, I stepped away from the crowd and followed her into a quieter corner of the room. The hushed, secretive tone of her voice sent shivers down my spine, and my heart began to race. Something was terribly wrong. Maggie's words when they came were like a thunderclap in the midst of a serene evening. She hinted at an affair, a forbidden liaison, that seemed so unbelievable I could hardly comprehend it. She suggested that my husband, John, was involved in a relationship with our own daughter, Emily. It felt like a cruel joke, a nightmare that I was desperately trying to wake up from. I listened to Maggie's words in shock, unable to respond. The weight of her revelation was crushing, and my mind was in turmoil. I had to find out the truth, no matter how painful it might be. The cheerful gathering that had promised laughter and camaraderie had transformed into the epicenter of a storm of emotions, the likes of which I had never experienced before. Maggie's revelation had cast a long and ominous shadow over my life. It was like a dreadful specter that haunted my every thought, refusing to let go. The days that followed the neighborhood gathering were filled with uncertainty, anxiety, and a relentless desire to uncover the truth. I became an unwitting detective in my own home, watching the interactions between John and Emily with a scrutinizing eye. Their behavior had transformed from innocent familial exchanges into something far more suspicious. Late-night phone calls, secretive text messages, and whispered conversations filled me with unease. Whenever I entered a room, it seemed as though their conversation abruptly halted, leaving an awkward silence in its wake. The love notes were perhaps the most distressing evidence of all. I discovered them hidden in various places around the house, on the kitchen counter, inside Emily's school books, and even tucked between the pages of John's magazines. They were filled with coded language, flirtatious messages, and promises that were too ambiguous to be dismissed as mere jokes between a father and a daughter. John's own behavior had changed as well. He would often claim to be working late, coming home with an exhaustion that was uncharacteristic for his usually energetic self. The distance between us had grown, and the warmth that once defined our marriage had been replaced by an icy chill. Conversations became more mechanical, and our laughter less frequent. It was as if a wedge had been driven between us, one that I couldn't comprehend or accept. As I delved deeper into my investigation, the weight of the evidence began to crush me. The love notes, the late nights, the secretive phone calls, it all pointed toward a truth that was too painful to acknowledge. I knew that I couldn't confront John and Emily based on suspicion alone. I needed concrete proof, undeniable evidence that would force them to confront their actions. I began meticulously documenting everything I could find, creating a folder filled with phone records, text messages, and copies of Emily's love notes. It was a harrowing process, each new piece of evidence a fresh wound to my heart, but I understood that it was necessary. I was determined to confront them with the truth, whatever that truth might be. In my moments of doubt and despair, I sought solace and advice from close friends, particularly Maggie, who had unwittingly set this investigation in motion. We discussed the mounting evidence, our fears, and the implications of what I was discovering. 
Maggie, being a trusted friend, encouraged me to remain patient and thorough. She cautioned against rushing into a confrontation that might tear our family apart, whether the suspicions proved true or not. The days dragged on, and I felt the weight of the secret growing heavier with each passing moment. I longed for the day when I could finally confront John and Emily, but I also knew that it would be a moment that would change our lives forever, no matter the outcome. The days that came after that mysterious conversation with Maggie felt like a never-ending roller coaster of feelings. Imagine feeling super happy one moment, and then, suddenly, everything turning really sad. I started to notice some strange things happening between my mom and dad and my sister, Emily. They used to be so close and happy together, but something had changed. They whispered secrets to each other and made me feel like I was on the outside. One day, I found some notes hidden around the house. They were written by my sister, but they had weird words and promises that made no sense. It was like they were speaking in a secret code. As I watched my family grow apart, it made me really sad. I decided to talk to my mom about it. I knew she was going through something tough, but I didn't know what it was. When I finally had the courage to ask my mom about what was happening, she started to cry. She told me that my dad and my sister had been keeping a big secret, and it was hurting her a lot. She said that they were doing things that were wrong, and it was hard for her to believe. I felt really sad seeing my mom cry, and it was hard to understand why my family was going through all of this. It was like a storm was brewing inside our home, and I just wanted everything to be happy again. I didn't know what would happen next, but I knew that I wanted to help my mom and bring back the happiness we used to have as a family. The heartache I felt was like a big cloud, but I was determined to make the sunshine return to our lives. As the days went by, the strange things happening in our family kept getting worse. The whispers and secrets between my mom, dad, and sister were like a dark cloud hanging over our house. I couldn't play or be my happy self anymore. One day, my mom looked really serious. She asked me to sit with her in the living room. We talked about how things had changed, and she explained that she had to have a big talk with my dad. She wanted to know the truth about what was going on. I could see that my mom was very worried and sad. She said that talking to my dad was really important, even if it was going to be a difficult conversation. She needed to know the truth, and I could tell she was scared about what she might find out. I didn't understand everything they were talking about, but I knew that my mom needed my support. I told her that I loved her and that I was there for her no matter what. She hugged me tightly and said I was the best, most caring child she could ever wish for. That made me feel really special. The day of the big conversation was coming closer, and our house felt even quieter than before. The air was heavy with tension, like a thunderstorm about to break. I didn't know what would happen next, but I hoped that when it was all over, our family could find its way back to happiness. I knew that I couldn't stop the storm from happening, but I wanted to help bring the sunshine back into our lives. The day of the big talk was going to change everything, and I hoped it would be the start of something better for our family. The day of reckoning arrived, and I found myself stealing my resolve for a conversation that was long overdue. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the evening settled in, our living room became the battleground for a confrontation I had been dreading. John and I sat across from each other, the room seemingly closing in around us. The silence was deafening, thick with unspoken words and the heaviness of the truth that lay between us. The weight of my suspicion had grown unbearable, and I knew it was time to ask the question that had been haunting me. I took a deep breath, my voice trembling, and finally found the words to break the silence. John, I began, is it true? Are you involved with Emily? The moment the words left my lips, it felt like a heavy curtain had been drawn back, exposing the raw reality of our situation. John's gaze shifted, his eyes avoiding mine, and for a long moment, he remained silent. The seconds stretched into eternity as I waited for his response, my heart pounding in my chest. The room seemed to close in on us, and I could feel the walls bearing witness to the disintegration of our world. Finally, he spoke, and his words were like a dagger to my heart. You are too old for me, he said, his voice cold and indifferent. The response sent shockwaves through my entire being. It was an admission of guilt, but it was also a painful rejection, a declaration that our love had become obsolete. The words echoed in the room, leaving me stunned and heartbroken. 
John's admission was like a cold, hard slap in the face, and it was clear that my husband had chosen to abandon our marriage for something he perceived as more exciting. It was a cruel blow, a declaration that I had become obsolete and that my love was no longer enough. In that moment, the reality of our shattered marriage became undeniable, and I could no longer deny the betrayal that had unfolded before me. My husband's infidelity and our daughter's involvement in it had torn our family apart. The path ahead was uncertain, but one thing was clear. The road to healing would be fraught with pain, anger, and heartache. John's words in that dimly lit living room cut through me like a knife. His admission, you were too old for me, was not only a confirmation of his guilt, but a heartless dismissal of the life we had built together. The room seemed to close in around us, and the weight of his betrayal hung in the air, suffocating me. I couldn't believe that the man I had loved, married, and shared my life with had reduced me to irrelevance. The love that had once been the cornerstone of our relationship had been replaced by a callous indifference. As I reeled from his words, I couldn't help but think about how far we had come together, our shared dreams, the joys, the struggles, the moments of laughter and tears, they all seemed to be wiped away in that single painful sentence. It was a stark reminder that time had passed, but it had been unkind to us. The realization that my husband had chosen to seek solace and excitement elsewhere with our own daughter shattered my heart into a million pieces. The betrayal was like a heavy cloud that hung over our family, casting a long shadow over everything we held dear. In the days that followed, I couldn't escape the profound sense of loss. Our family, once a source of love and support, had been fractured by deceit and infidelity. I grappled with the emotional wreckage, trying to understand how we had arrived at this point and what it meant for our future. I knew that the road ahead was uncertain and rocky. Rebuilding trust and repairing the damage that had been done would be a monumental task. The heartache was all encompassing, and I was faced with a profound decision— whether to forge a path toward forgiveness and healing or allow the weight of betrayal to consume us all. The days that followed John's heartless admission were turbulent and agonizing. I found myself caught in the grip of emotions I'd never experienced before. Betrayal, anger, and despair became my constant companions. My love for John, once a powerful force that had bound us together, had transformed into a seething rage. The very thought of his betrayal not just to our marriage, but to our family, was a festering wound that refused to heal. How could he have chosen such a path, a path that led him to our own daughter, Emily, for money and excitement? Every glance at the empty side of our bed, every meal eaten alone, and every memory of the laughter we had once shared only intensified my fury. The very home we had built together had become a prison of bitterness and pain, one day, unable to contain the whirlwind of emotions any longer, I confronted Emily about her role in a devastating affair. Her admission had been a painful revelation, but her actions had caused unimaginable turmoil in our lives. I demanded answers, seeking to understand how she had become entangled in this destructive web of deceit. As she recounted her involvement with John, I was struck by the profound sadness in her eyes. Emily's guilt and remorse were palpable, and it was clear that she, too, had been a victim of her own choices. She revealed the financial struggles that had driven her to this point, but it was no excuse for the pain she had inflicted upon our family. In the days that followed, my fury continued to burn like a relentless fire. It wasn't just directed at John and Emily, but at the circumstances that had driven them to this point. I felt betrayed by the world, by fate, and by my own inability to prevent this tragedy from unfolding. I knew that I couldn't let this fury consume me. It was a destructive force that threatened to tear apart the very fabric of our family. I needed to find a way to harness this anger and channel it into something constructive, something that would lead us toward healing and reconciliation. The path forward remained unclear, but one thing was certain. I was no longer willing to be a passive observer in my own life. The fury that had taken root within me would become a driving force, pushing me to confront the challenges that lay ahead and to find a way to rebuild what had been shattered. In the aftermath of the shocking revelations and the overwhelming emotions that had gripped our family, I felt an urgent need to take action. 
The fury, the pain, and the sense of betrayal were all consuming, and I couldn't let these emotions continue to erode the very foundations of our lives. I decided to confront John once more, this time with the evidence of Emily's confession. It was a difficult conversation that demanded courage and resolve. I had reached a point where I could no longer be a passive victim of this tragedy. I needed to be an active participant in shaping our family's future. The confrontation was a fierce battle of words and emotions. I presented the evidence, demanding that he face the undeniable truth. The weight of Emily's confession and the devastation and the devastation it had wrought upon our family could no longer be denied. It was time for John to come to terms with consequences of his actions. As the truth bore down on him, John began to see the gravity of the situation. It was a painful awakening, an understanding of the profound damage he'd inflicted on our family. The anger and frustration boiled over, and it became clear that the path ahead would be fraught with challenges. I felt a deep sense of desperation as we navigated this treacherous terrain. Our family had been fractured by betrayal, and I was willing to take drastic measures to rebuild the trust and love that had been torn apart. It was clear that forgiveness wouldn't come easily, but it was a necessary step if we were to find a way back to one another. In a moment of sheer desperation, I issued an ultimatum to John. I implored him to make amends, to seek professional help, and to do whatever it took to heal our family. I couldn't bear the thought of losing everything we had built together, but the path to forgiveness had to begin with a sincere commitment to change. The days that followed were a tumultuous whirlwind of emotions, as we grappled with the consequences of our actions and the profound transformation our family was undergoing. It was a journey that would test the limits of our love and our capacity for forgiveness, but it was a journey we had to undertake if we were to emerge from the wreckage of our shattered lives. The ultimatum I had issued to John marked a turning point in our tumultuous journey. It was a desperate plea for change, a call to rebuild what had been shattered by betrayal, and a commitment to confront the demons that had torn our family apart. The days that followed were a period of intense self-reflection and soul-searching. John recognized the gravity of his actions and the pain he had caused. He embarked on a journey of self-improvement and sought professional help to address the issues that had led him down such a destructive path. Emily, too, was determined to make amends. She understood the profound impact of her choices on our family, and her remorse was a testament to her commitment to heal the wounds she'd inflicted. It was a painful process for all of us, marked by difficult conversations and the slow, agonizing rebuilding of trust. Forgiveness was a long and arduous road, but it was one we were determined to travel. We couldn't erase the past, but we could choose to heal and move forward. Our family had been torn apart, but the love that had once bound us together was a force too powerful to be extinguished. Through therapy and open communication, we began the process of rebuilding our relationships. It was a challenging and often painful journey, but it was also a path toward understanding, empathy, and ultimately forgiveness. In time, the wounds began to heal, and our family, though forever scarred by the past, emerged stronger and more resilient. The pain and heartache would never truly fade, but they served as a reminder of the importance of love, trust, and the enduring bonds that held us together. The path to healing was a long and challenging one, but it was a path we were committed to walking. Our family, though forever changed, found a way to redefine its identity, its values, and its future. The story of our family's journey through darkness and despair would forever be etched in our hearts a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the power of forgiveness.